Let's talk about some of the major solar missions and terminologies related to it. Before we begin, three important terms that you must be familiar with. Rover, Lander and Orbiter. What is the difference? Now, as the name suggests, Lander would land. Now, since it would land, it would remain on that place and do all the required study. So, therefore, Lander does has feet. Rover, as the name suggests, would row or move around. So, it has wheels and it would move on the object where it lands, any astronomical object. The next is Orbiter. Now, Orbiter, again, as the name suggests, it would orbit. So, most of the solar missions we would see are in the form of orbiters. They would orbit the sun. This orbiter would neither have wheels nor have feet very important. Now, since it's a solar mission, uh, we need to understand terminology related to sun. So, L1 is one of the five points for the Langerie's point and Langerie's point is a point where the earth and the sun mass balances. Now, when we are talking about solar missions, if we don't start with Genesis, it's actually futile. Genesis is one of the major discovery spacecraft which went to study the sun and the idea was to bring the solar, uh, solar wind samples back to earth so that those could be studied. Now this mission was started in 2001. It was functional and in connection till 2004. Then when it was around to reach the surface of the earth with the solar samples, near um, it actually uh, had an exposure with the upper atmosphere and the samples drop the 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 plane uh, the spacecraft crashed in the region of utaha however the clean chamber was still preserved now clean chamber as you can see the sample here here we have hexagonal structures a comnet structure which is tight and this is made up of very pure ultra pure semiconductors and um, high grade uh, wafers so that the samples that are brought from the solar wind remain intact they are not exposed to the earth's atmosphere and a study on them could be done very very carefully so as i mentioned only this clean chamber chamber was preserved and the studies on these clean chamber is still going on Another important thing was this Genesis mission went through the Johnson Space Center and it was in the Delta rocket. Now why this name is important because the recent uh, Aditya mission from India, the Aditya L1 mission went through the PSLV. So it is the PSLV C57. Now the most important thing about the India solar mission is it would have the booster at two stages. So fueling would take place, uh, basically the booster would be fired at two points of time. That is one of the most important things. The second important thing is it would have four remote sensing and three on-site experiment uh, which would be uh, the experiment facilities which would be available and the equipments which have gone with the Aditya L1 are the list is given here so basically spectrometers uh, solar wind particle analyzers plasma analyzers high resolution digital magnetometers are some of those three parts of the earth the three layers which is the photosphere uh, chromosphere and corona all of those would be studied in detail and the on-site uh, equipments, the three on-site equipments that have gone would actually study the local environment at the L1 point. Now, of the five L points, this is the location at the L1 point where Aditya would, the three experiment setups of the Aditya would be functional. One very important thing along with this discovery from India is uh, the India being a signatory to the NASA Artemis Accord. Now, as per the NASA Artemis Accord, India would partner with space programs with uh, other nations and recently India is committed with NASA. Few of the Indian astronauts would be given training at uh, Houston, the Johnson Space Center. Also, we would be uh, partnering for low earth uh, observatory and this would be capable of doing the survey of entire planet within 
12 days and bringing in samples of ice mass, vegetation and uh, information on other environmental hazards. India is also planning to bring in space policy. Now, from the other nations, what are the major uh, uh, solar missions that have gone? So the first one we would talk about is SOHO. It is named as Solar and Heliospheric Observatory. Helio again means sun. Uh, as Aditya is the Hindi name for sun, so the India's mission was Aditya L1. For US, the first mission, uh, the major missions was SOHO, that is Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, released in 1995. And this was a joint mission of NASA, European Space Agency and Japanese Space Agency, which is JAXA. Now, together, these three worked on the sun's atmosphere, the interior of the sun and discovery on solar cycle, coronal mass ejection and uh, coronal holes. So those were the key ideas under SOHO. The next came in was Parker probe. Now Parker probe was in 2018 relatively smaller than the solar orbiter and it was the first one to touch the surface of the earth now a uh, sun sorry it was the first one to touch the surface of the sun and making it a mission which would fly nearly 3.9 million miles so this was again an interesting mission however next to it was the solar orbiter this was a joint mission of european space agency and nasa the idea was it would fly further closer to the sun than the parker probe and would bring in the samples from the sun's atmosphere as well as study the magnetic field of the sun. So each of these missions had certain uh, important variations and certain important things for which they were known. In 1997, uh, Advanced Composition Explorer went. Then again, a very important uh, mission was the Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory, which was named as STEREO. This, this STEREO was in two parts, STEREO A and STEREO B. Now, STEREO A and STEREO B trace the flow of energy. STEREO B actually uh, lost its connection, but the connection with the STEREO A is still maintained. And through this, uh, the Earth-Sun relationship is to be studied. So there are two observatories, one uh, ahead of the Earth in the orbit and the other trailing behind it. So this was the idea to understand the Earth-Sun relationship through the stereo because uh, as the name suggests, it talks about the terrestrial relations. The next is SDO, Solar Dynamics Observatory. This was released in 2010 and this aimed at understanding the wavelength patterns in the magnetic field which was generated and the influence of sun's, uh, sun's energy and the magnetic field on the weather in the surrounding. So study of the magnetic cycles of the sun, the solar flares and coronal mass ejection was another important aspect under solar dynamic observatory. The next was the iris. Now the similar iris as in the eye the name has been captured there, uh, interf uh, Interface Region Imaging Spectrograph and this was released in 2013. The idea was how solar materials gather energy to study the process through which the solar, um, solar material actually uh, gather the energy and study the spicules in the sun, uh, the interaction between the solar wind and our atmosphere. The next was the projects through Japan. Japan had four major projects. Hino 3, which is the first project, it was in 1981 known as Astro A. And this project was launched through the Jap uh, JAXA, which is the Japanese Space Agency. Uh, it actually studied uh, using X-ray technique, the solar flares. The next was Yohoko, which is the solar A. Now don't confuse, the names are again here solar A and solar B, but these are not as per the names which have been given by the US. So these are different missions by Japan itself. So Yokoho was another mission as solar A, and this was launched to understand uh, the outer atmosphere of the sun. The next mission is another important mission, which was the trace mission, transient regional and coronal explorer. So it actually focused on the layer corona of the sun and the studies were done on the corona layer. The last one and the most important among this is 
Hinode, which is the Solar Bee mission. It was launched in 2006 in collaboration with the US and UK. And this was the one which would study the impact of sun on earth. So how those uh, perceptions of what we see on the earth and what we study about sun would change with the studies or the results being brought by Hinode has been important. Also, the influence of the solar atmosphere on the space was another important idea that would be studied. Uh, besides this, the sun's magnetic dynamo was another aspect that was covered. China, again in the race, uh, started its first mission as ASOS in 2022 and this was the Advanced Space uh, B Solar Observatory plan. The last of these, among these we would say is Europe uh, and Europe started with its first project which is known as ULASIS. Then you have the Proba 2 which was released in 2001. Proba 3 and SMILE in line, uh, SMILE has been scheduled for 2025, very very important and Proba 3 for the next year in 2024. So all of these projects again aim to study the sun, the outer atmosphere, the solar flares and the coronal mass ejection. So those were some of the important missions. Uh, thanks for joining in. Have a wonderful day.